finals. You, you, you made it here, right? I mean, the, the, the journey, I guess, is still going. But, I mean, you got to this part. Obviously, that's, a, that's no easy accomplishment. So what's, what's the feel for you right now? Uh, man, I mean, it's, it's really cool. But, I mean, you know, it's just like the last time I was here talking to media. You know, I, I said I fully expected to win the competition. So this isn't something that's, like, really surprising. Um, it's, it's really cool being here. But uh, this is where I expected myself to be and, you know, um, on Saturday, I expect myself to win on Saturday as well. So, you know. Very nice. I guess uh, your overall feel of how the experience was will probably change depending on the result on Saturday. <laughs> but, but right now, how, how would you describe the, the time of the Ultimate Fighter? It's been a while since we had the show. No, uh, no, matter, no matter what happens from this point on, um, my experience on the show was uh, so incredible, man. Um, you know, I've said it once and I'll say it a million times. I mean, Volk. Craig, you know, Uncle Joe, Frank, Woody, Colby, you know, all those guys, the whole coaching staff, they were all amazing. Volk was an incredible example of, like, not only uh, of what it was like to be a champion fighter, but what it was like to be a professional. Um, uh, you know, it's just the, the guys on my team, they were all awesome. You know, we all put in work every day. We all got better together. So it was, it was, a, great, it was a great experience, no matter what happens. I'll always look back on uh, the ultimate fa- uh, the ultimate fighter very fondly. That's awesome, man. So you make it to the finals, uh, and then you get an opponent switch a couple weeks out, right? Give me, give me, you know, what your initial thoughts were. How much did that change everything for you? Uh, getting a new opponent. Um, you know, it, it it was kind of a a bummer because uh, you know I really wanted to fight Trey Sean. You know what I'm saying? Um, me and Trey Sean, we've almost gotten booked to fight each other. Uh, multiple times, even before the show, like uh, there was, we we almost fought each other for you know three hundred dollars to show three hundred dollars to win in Myrtle Beach uh, last year, right before COVID started, uh, and so it was just going to be a really cool thing, um, but you know, uh, unfortunately Trey's out, uh, Gilbert's in, um, you know, I couldn't be happier for Gil. Gil's a cool dude. Um, you know, obviously we spent a lot of time together in the house. Uh, totally different fighting style, completely different fighting style. But, um, you know, I, fortunately I just feel incredibly sharp right now, just overall. You know, I mean, we were game planning for Trey Sean. Uh, we were preparing ourselves for his skill set, but I just feel so sharp overall. Uh, you know, it doesn't really matter who's stepping in right now. I feel like I can handle the business. So, yeah, I feel all right. You feel like you have to fight Trishon at some point? Or maybe this is like the Habib, Tony Ferguson of, of, of tough, whatever <laughs> just never comes together. Man, you know, <laughs> it's, yeah, it's, it's uh, yeah, my wife thinks that this is just, is like a sign that that fight's never meant to happen. Uh, and, you know, if it happens, cool. If Otherwise, I'm not going to think too much about it. You know, I'm going to keep on doing my thing. I'm going to keep on, you know, continuing my uh, professional career. Um, you know, I can't sit here getting caught up on, you know, one person in like a whole what if situation. So, you know, it, maybe, <laughs> you know, that's it. maybe, who knows, you know, it'd be cool. But, you know, if it doesn't, whatever. So. In the meantime, uh, does fighting a teammate prove more challenging? Does it make it? difficult or, or you know change how you how you approach the fight um well um what's interesting about this and you know i'm be curious to know if gilbert feels the same way um even though i've had a, a small amount of time to get ready for this uh specific opponent um the familiarity that i have from training with him uh actually you know makes my knowledge of him way Um, you know, I have a greater knowledge of him than, you know, I have of someone who I've never, you know, sparred with or rolled with, but I've watched, you know, tons of tape on them. So um, it's really interesting, um, you know, fighting a teammate. uh, But, I mean, you know, but at the end of the day, it's a fight. So you just have to go in there and fight and, you know, see who's the better man. So, um yeah, we'll see, man. We'll see. Very nice. Last thing for me, uh, what would victory mean to you here? I mean, winning the Ultimate Fighter, I know it's, it's just a step in the journey, I guess, but uh, still a big accomplishment. So, I mean, what, what would this, this win mean for you? Man, it would be, it would be huge, you know, because um, 
this is uh, one of those things where uh, me personally, I know the likelihood of me ever being in a situation like this ever again is like never going to happen, you know. So um, to be able to be the ultimate fighter, um, you know, that's something that, you know, I'll be able to carry with me to my grave, you know what I'm saying? And this is the only chance I'll ever have to win that. So, um, you know, it would be it would be tremendous. You know, it'd probably be the biggest, you know, individual accomplishment I've ever had in my, you know, personal life. So it would be huge. It would be huge. We've had some crazy stories from some of the guys about what's been happening in the, the house that we didn't get to see on TV. Yeah. You heard about the um, Halderhead incident and the running around naked. I'm curious if you have any fun stories you want to share with us. Who told you the the running around naked story? That should be my story. Well, <laughs> give us the give us the details, and we only heard oh. very little. Oh, okay, all right, all right. Um, well, I and you know this is why I was so surprised that no nudity made uh, the TV because there was multiple occasions. Um, the first time, um, I'll just go into the best ones. I'm not gonna go into all of them. I'll go into the best ones. But the first time, Volk. Uh, had came over to the house and he was doing like a little cookout for uh, me and the boys. And towards the end, uh, me and Ryder, we were playing Volk and uh, Uncle Joe in a game of pool. And the losers had to go do, you know, to quote Volk, a nudie run. You know what I'm saying? And so, um, you know, Volk is like low-key pretty good at uh, – pool and Uncle Joe was in my head, you know what I'm saying? He was talking mad junk. And I don't know if it was the accent or, you know, how old he was. It was really messing with me. So me and Ryder, we got smoked. And, uh, yeah, we ran around the whole house uh, butt naked. Uh, bless the heart, there was this one production lady who had no idea. We came around the corner around the house. And she was like, oh, you know. But, um, and then uh, the, the, the next time, it was like right before we left the house, um, uh, me and Ryder, uh, we, we had Scrappy, you know, introduce us, give us like a, you know, like a basketball style introduction. And, uh, yeah, we went out and streaked through the Apex Center during, um, Ortega, Ortega's team practice. So, you know, um, we just wanted to give them a farewell gift because, you know, we just appreciated sharing the gym with them so much. So, uh, yeah, you know, no streaking made it, um. We played this one game of Speed Jenga. Um, <laughs> it was one of the nights where there was, like, multiple people under the influence. Everyone was pretty, like, for the most part, professional during the whole uh, course of the show. But there was a couple nights where uh, people, like, let loose. And it was always, I mean, maybe it was funnier uh, being there and, you know, maybe being under the influence as these things are happening. But... Uh, yeah, there was, there was a bunch of stuff that happened that didn't make TV that I thought was kind of like uh, would have been TV gold. But, you know, I'm not a producer, so I don't know, you know, what I'm talking about necessarily. For the record, I believe it was Gilbert who told us the story. So it must have left a lasting impression on him. You know, all right, if it's Gilbert, I'll give it a pass, you know what I'm saying? Because, you know, he might have had to see something that he wasn't ready for, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thanks for taking the time, but uh, you, you hit the nail on the head earlier, of course, but at the end of the day, it's a fight, like you said, but what were some of the adjustments you had to make, if, if any, for your new opponent? Like, I mean, um, you know, it's, you don't have to get too complicated with it. I mean, if you just, like, look at, you know, um, his tail of the tape versus Trey Sean's tail of the tape, you know, you'll notice that, you know, uh, Trey Sean's a lot shorter, doesn't have the reach that Gilbert has, uh, you know, Treshawn didn't wrestle like Gilbert wrestled. Um, with that being said, uh, Gilbert isn't as fast as Treshawn is. You know what I'm saying? Um, so they're both extremely dangerous uh, fighters. They're just dangerous in different ways. So um, it, it was more or less kind of like making mental notes um, on just like little things. Like if I end up in certain positions uh, where I would have felt – like I had more liberty to do certain things in certain situations against Trey. Now against Gilbert, I have to react differently uh, because of Gilbert's skill set. So, um, 
you know, just nothing crazy, just little minor things me and my coaches have talked about. Okay, excellent. And one last mental note, mm -hmm. not much of a choice, but would you have preferred being in front of a live audience, some fans saying your name, or you're good with the apex and that, like, you know, that quiet, you could hear your coach type level? Man, I wanted all the fans. I wanted all the noise. I wanted all the energy. It would have been awesome. Oh, man. Because, I mean, and granted, you know, I'm not going to, like, take this for granted. This will still be, like, an amazing experience. But on the show, you know, we fought twice in the Apex with no fans. You know what I'm saying? And so if we would have been able to have the finale in front of fans, you know, that would have been a whole new experience. And that would have just put the, like, cherry on top of, like, this crazy <laughs> ice cream sundae. You know what I mean? Like, uh, yeah, no, fans would have been awesome. Like, uh, it'll probably be less – uh, I'll probably be less anxious with there being no one uh, in the audience, but I would have rather had fans there. All right, excellent. Thank you, and best of luck, Saturday. Thank you, thank you, thank you.